Ever since starting in this hardcore world, we've had a big focus on the village I live in and the builds that help me simply survive and thrive in the world. But today, it's time to refocus our attention on the animals that have helped our journey so far. I want to build an epic and extremely colorful barn. Welcome to episode 6 everybody! Today I have a very ambitious building goal for us in mind. We've had these animals here in these pens since like episode 1 or 2? One of those episodes since very early on in this let's play. And well, I figure it's finally time we start properly transforming this entire village. And we gotta start somewhere. I suppose you could say that we already sort of have started because we have a couple of preliminary early game structures right here. But today, I wanna build bigger. And if I'm building bigger, I'm gonna need some motivation. My motivation is coming in the form of these animal pens, which are not only an eyesore, but they're also, well, a little bit cruel because when it rains, there's no shelter for the animals. Good timing, weather. Thank you for that. That really helped my monologue. We have this little pathway right here that leads towards our spawn point and also that first archaeology site that we found. So I think we'll use this as a main route into our village and we'll transform it into a sort of barn or stable sort of structure that you can just walk right through and enter the village. All we gotta do to start is clear out a little bit of space and fix up the terrain. This temporary wall was useful last episode, but I think the staples will do a better job at blocking this area off. I'm not sure exactly how much I should be evening up this terrain. I mean, I don't want to take away its character, but uh, my animals are going to need a pasture, you know? There's this giant hole here, and I don't really have any plans for it. I mean, typically you'd probably make this into some sort of mine, but I think I'm just gonna cover it up. Is it bad to just cover it up? I mean, we don't really need a cave here, right? Oh. Yeah, no, we're covering it up. Ow! Jeez. <laughs> that actually scared me. <laughs> don't worry, we're doing a double layer of dirt. On some of it. Yeah, that seems a little more villager safe, to be honest. And with the land prepped, now it's time to plan for the actual build. And uh, this is this is gonna be a big one. <laughs> well, at least pretty big for episode six. So we're gonna need a lot of materials. I think to make this all go a little smoother, I'm gonna just make a little crafting area right next to where I'm going to build. We got our chest and our stone cutter and another crafting table. Don't judge me. I, it's fine. Now, as for the blocks, this is where things are going to get a little tricky. We'll start with the ones that we can get in the overworld, which is my purple farm and also my cherry wood growing. Man, I'm so glad I built this thing. So convenient. Alright, I've got some of the overworld materials gathered now, so I want to get started on this barn. And maybe, like, right here is good enough? I'm literally just gonna use this pathway that we already have for my starting point. And actually, I think I want it to be seven wide in the passageway through. My inspiration for this barn is taken from my lovely friend, Mythical Sausage, who has made some amazing barns and stables in the past. I'm going to be taking the shape inspiration from one of his designs and turning it very pink and purple. So let me show you what I'm thinking for one of the wall sections. Now, of course, we are going to be reasonable and do a <laughs> not pink foundation, but that's where reasonable stops. Because I'm thinking for each of these walls, we're going to make things extremely pink. Like, <laughs> extremely, extremely. Let's see, we're gonna want a little bit of depth like this here, and then maybe we're gonna want something over the top of it, so like this. And some more intricate pink details on the inside. Trap doors on all the sides, fences, and finally, purper. Now listen, I know you're probably thinking I'm insane for doing a completely pink barn like this. I mean, it's literally a cotton candy Barbie barn wall design. And it's not 
going to be everybody's cup of tea, I'll be real. We're, we're very used to the spruce wood and dark oak and cobblestone sort of vibe. So if that's your thing and this is not, listen, no judgment. But I'm going to have some fun with this color palette. And I think so far, I really like this. We've just got to do it on all the sides and then do a big entrance way here. The only thing is we're going to also need a couple of contrasty blocks. The good news is the bark on the cherry log matches really good with these nether bricks that we got in the last episode. And then that also matches really good with the crimson blanks. So we're going to start leaning into these colors, which means we have to go to the nether to collect them, which is fine. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? It'll, it'll be fine. Before I go anywhere in the nether, I think I'm going to make a quick fire resistance potion. Yeah, not that I think anything bad's going to happen, but you know, just in case. There we go. I'll do it. Quick enchanting break. Not much left today. That's all right. Off we go. <laughs> Forgot about that. Oh my gosh, that was such a good shot. <laughs> this stuff is so satisfying to collect. All right, I think that'll do it for the crimson stem. Now all we gotta do is go and get some nether brick. Oh, Strider grew up. This part's a little scary because I have to actually remember where I went last episode and, um, well, to be honest, I don't remember. Really should have left some markers for myself. Yeah, there we go. There's the danger bridge. Whew, this is fine. One of these episodes, I'm gonna set up a proper nether tunnel. Now, this is the block that I need a ton of. I'm gonna build the outline of my roofs in this block. Um, I could smelt the netherrack for it. That would probably be the easier way down the line. But for right now, since I only need a couple of stacks, I'm gonna start deconstructing this leg of the nether fortress. I'm sure this is fine, right? Nobody was using this. The weather skeletons don't need this block. Okay, maybe the blaze needed it. It's my bad, I didn't know, okay? It's fine, we'll carry on. This time leaving a wall so that the blaze don't know. What they can't see won't hurt them, okay? All right, you know what? That'll probably do it for today. Didn't even end up using the potion, look at me go. Oh. Home, sweet home. Hello, villagers. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Everybody's going to work. <laughs> I think I've given myself a little bit of a jump scare coming back to this. <laughs> it's, it's a lot big. It's very, it's very pink. You know what? <laughs> um, now that I've collected up all of these blocks, I think that I would like to make a small compromise, mostly for my own sanity. We're, we're not going to use the pink powdered concrete, okay? You know, it, it's really nice and we will absolutely be using it in a couple of structures around here, but this is not the one. In the interest of making things just slightly more reasonable in the construction of this barn, I'm gonna go back to the classic spruce to add in just a little bit more of that neutral brown that we're all used to. You know, give, give the eyes a place to rest. Don't worry though, it's still gonna be mostly pink. I've also realized before we get started here that I wanna make this whole wall section just one block taller. The reason for that is this is seven blocks across, and then this is six blocks tall. Seven by six is a rectangle. One block taller would make it a square, and I think the squares are just a bit more satisfying. So one block taller it shall be. Gosh, my character is a little bit too short to be building something this tall. When I was trying to plan the color scheme for this build, I actually debated between regular old cherry wood being here, birch wood being here, or even jungle wood or acacia logs, like the gray ones. And to be honest, all of those options all looked great. I just settled on the spruce because it's the easiest to get. I think jungle wood especially is great in this sort of scenario next to the pink. All right, not to be dramatic, but that is already so much more elegant. Granted, it doesn't look that much like a barn, so that's the part that we're gonna fix now. In order to make this structure actually look like a barn, we're going to have to actually shape everything out, which means putting in the basics of the rest of the walls and outlining the roof. I think this is probably tall enough. 
This roof shape is the part where I'm mostly taking inspiration for my friend Sausage, but in his build, he does this amazing barn shape up at the top and then slowly kind of slopes it down towards the edge. Just like so. Yeah, honestly, I think this is gonna work. I think this is my favorite stage of building something. This like framed out stage where you could totally see exactly what this barn is going to look like. It just has no details and you know, you can see right through the walls. It gives me a really good idea of if this is actually gonna fit in this space. And I think in this case, it fits really well here. I mean, you gotta imagine that this pen is relocated to there, but I think overall, this is lovely. So all we gotta do is fill in all the walls and also the roof. Chippy, uh, pretty simple. Let's, let's do it. Maybe in this case, we'll start with the foundation. All right, foundation is in. Next stage is, well, probably the walls. So we just need a ton of spruce logs. And I'm out. Oh, it's a good thing we've got some trees to chop over here. Look at the barn from here. I actually think that fits so good. All right, okay, back to work. It's time for details, details, lots of details. This is definitely the prettiest barn I've ever done. <laughs> I'm just loving the process of seeing this come together. I've never built with so much pink and purple in my whole entire life. And it's, it's definitely something. I think I just have one side left to do and it's this side over here, which has a pretty steep sort of foundation. So I'm gonna have to also extend the deep slate down over here. A little bit of building parkour. No big deal. Hey, got our first barn cat. Oh, oh, I wish I had fish on me. I don't think I've done any fishing yet. Hold on, everyone. This is important. Oh, God, my enchanting luck. <laughs> as fun as fishing is, if we're being honest, this is just easier. All right, I got the goods. Now let's see if we can get the cat. Oh no, I don't see it. I may have lost it. Kitty? That's okay, I'll just keep a little bit of fish in my inventory in case I see another one. We do need barn cats for sure. Now, where was I? All right, the exterior is basically complete. So I guess the next thing we need to do is actually work on the inside and get it all ready for animals in here. First thing I wanna do is switch out this path for some coarse dirt. I think it'll just look a lot better in the barn and this yellowish color does not go with our vibe. And then we'll of course wanna flatten out the ground over here for the animals. We're gonna have two distinct sides down here for the animals and I want those separated by these big pillars so that everything looks supported which is great because that gives us lots of room upstairs for even more activities. Gonna need some gates, perfect. Oh, and then we also can't lose any animals through the windows, but I don't exactly wanna put glass windows in a barn. Maybe fences or trap doors. Ooh, we could do nether brick fences. I just need nether bricks. Smelting netherrack is definitely not something I've done recently, but it's very useful that you can do it. Nice. All right, let's see how this looks. Oh, I like it. Yeah, that ties in with the roof and also with the cherry wood log there. 
fantastic. I'm absolutely loving this color palette. It's honestly just so nice to work with some colors, especially colors that I love. I'm really into pink. I'm also really into green, but we don't have green stairs and slabs yet, at least not in the color that I want. When we have that, I, I'm gonna go crazy. I'm never gonna build anything else once we have that. <laughs> Let me know what your favorite color is and what stairs and slabs you would like to build out of with it. <laughs> the pink is definitely pretty close for me. I'm, I'm enjoying it. Normally in barns, I just do ladders up to the top, but I think it would actually be cool to do an actual staircase in this one. I mean, we have the space. This is a huge barn. Okay, here we have the loft, and here is the animal pens down here. I think this should work fine because whatever animal we put in here isn't gonna be able to get to the entrance out here. So this should be okay. <gasps> I think I just heard a cat. Hello? <gasps> Whoa! Yeah, kitty. It's in Minecraft have got to be the most frustrating mob. Come on, come on, come on. Yes! Oh, nice! Got our first barn kitty. Come on, come on. That's it. You can guard the entranceway. Don't worry, kitty. We're putting lots of details into this thing. Next thing that I need to do is just basically clean up all of the lines, especially along this roof where it's such a weird shape. Just want to kind of polish everything off. Okay, next up, we need a bunch of details. First of all, of course, some lanterns, but I think I would also like to make a couple of cauldrons for like little water areas for the animals. We'll put that down there and another one just over here. And for the lanterns, we wanna light up the outside and luckily we have the perfect shapes out here to be able to place tons of lanterns. While we're on the topic of water for the animals, I also want food for them, so I need a bunch of hay bales, and that's gonna involve harvesting a ton of this wheat. There we go, 11's not bad. And I think we'll just put the extra upstairs, so, you know, to be realistic and stuff. Oh, I think it's time to move the animals in. I'm so excited. First though, I've got to figure out where exactly everyone's gonna go. I kind of imagine my horses living over here. Only problem is I don't have any horses, so let's focus on what we have. <laughs> Maybe cows and sheep can share this pen together and the chickens could potentially hang out in the loft. Where, where do chickens like hanging out? I guess I probably should have built a coop. It's fine, the loft will do. I do have this lovely donkey here that I got earlier, so we can start with the donkey. There you go. Welcome to your home. And then we just need the cows and the sheep. There we go. Yep. Yeah. Th this is great. Come on, everybody. Oh, so sorry, cat. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, 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 it's a huge barn. Lots of space for everybody. Oh, nailed it. Now I can finally take down these pens. Barns just add so much life to an area. And you know what, as I was doing that, I actually had an idea for the upstairs. What if up here we had our bulk storage? I mean, a barn could be sort of like a work area after all. We could have like crafting tables and things up here in places where the villagers maybe won't really come. After all, I have so many things in my tiny little starter house right now that it is starting to overflow. Some bulk storage would be greatly appreciated. Only problem is, now I don't have quite as much room for my chickens. Hmm. We'll have to build you guys a coop. I am super happy to finally have a place to put all my extra stuff though. Like, for example, all of my extra gravel. All right, now before I work on anything else with this barn, I really want to fix up this whole terrain leading up to it. Only problem is, my shovel's about to break. And it's kind of a lame shovel anyways. Let's hope we get something other than I'm breaking. Oh, efficiency. I'll take it. Oh yeah, this is way better. That is definitely better already. It also makes me want to dress everything up with a couple more leaves. After all, there is just so much pink, it might be really nice to balance everything out with a little bit of greenery. Perfect, now we just need to help out our chickens and build them a proper chicken coop, which hopefully shouldn't be too difficult. Oh. Oh gosh, why are they all fleeing? 
Okay, um, that's fine. <laughs> I want the chicken coop to be slightly elevated off of the ground layer. So I'm going to do a little slab floor right here. Now, what are you doing up here? <laughs> this is how you guys get in weird situations. Get off the roof. Get out of the coop. Honestly, these villagers will get a little cute purple gradient moment going for them. Oh yeah, all the chickens are going to be jealous of you. You've got the best chicken coop in this whole world. All right, chickens, you ready to see your brand new home? There we go, oh my gosh, I think they like it. <laughs> this is so cute. You can put like little shelves in here that look kind of like roosts for them. Maybe even if we ever find some coral, we can make it look like nests. For now, I'd say they look quite a lot happier. Had to uh, replenish the population a bit. I love that we could see in through the trap doors. <laughs> That's so fun. Now it's time to have a little cleanup and get rid of all of the clutter outside the barn from the building process. And of course, I still think this is a great place to potentially have a bunch of workbenches in here. Nice and organized. Now the chickens are happy in their coop. The sheep and cows seem pretty happy in their pen over here. But my donkey, well, my donkey's all alone. I have a bunch of extra saddles and also some iron horse armor from when I was in the nether exploring. I also love the fact that you can craft the leather horse armor and that is dyeable. I get to find a pink and also purple horse for this armor and we can hang the extra saddles in the barn. All I need is a bunch of sugar so that I can make better friends with all the horses. This horse is so beautiful and has been living out here for so long. Do you want to be my friend? Please. Okay, we try again. Come on, dude, I've got a beautiful barn for you. You'll love it, I promise. <gasps> there we go, yes. This horse looks so good in purple. And it's actually a pretty decently quick horse. Let's see about the jumping. Um, can you do two and a half? Yeah. Huh, this actually is not a bad horse. <laughs> All right, horse number one. Now we just had to find you a friend. And luckily there's a whole bunch of horses over here. Hello, horses. Would you like to be my friend? This horse doesn't have as many hearts as the last one, but let's see if it's quick. Eh, it's a lot slower. Can you jump two and a half blocks? No. Sorry, dude, you're not the one. I want to start off with two pretty good horses so that we can potentially breed them to get a really good horse baby. Hmm, I see cows, pigs, sheep. Where are all the horses? Oh, there we go, there's some. The spotted one is beautiful. Oh dear. This is a pretty slow horse, I won't lie. Finding the perfect horse is hard work. Oh, a three block jumper. And pretty quick. Fortunately, this was the exact same color as the last one, but I'll take it. Oh, this makes going over this mountain ridge so much easier. So without the armor on, this one is all brown and this one is brown with white hooves and a white stripe on its face. So it'll be our pink armor and our lavender armor. I love them already. We'll have to breed them and get a mule as well. That'd be awesome. And with that, the barn is complete. Along with, of course, our little chicken coop over here and our old sheep farm, which will probably have to move to a better and more sophisticated area. As always, let me know all of your thoughts down in the comments down below. I can't wait to hear from you. Oh, and give me some names for the horses and the cat. I'll see you next time, everyone. Goodbye, don't forget to subscribe.